right, welcome to 5-Minute EKG, where we talk about an EKG topic in 5 minutes or less. This is going to be the introductory session, so what we're going to talk about is just basic introductory knowledge needed to interpret EKG. So this is a 12-lead EKG, um, which uh, probably doesn't need pointing out, but we can say this is lead 1, 2, 3, lead AVR, AVL, AVF. That's 6, then leads V1, V2, V3, V4 v5, and v6, and if we do some simple math, that adds up to 12 different leads. Uh, when looking at a 12-lead EKG, um, it's easiest to think of the x-axis, so horizontally, this is a measure of time, and vertically, this is a measure of amplitude. A typical 12-lead EKG records over 10 seconds, so from the start, to the very end is 10 seconds. It records at a speed of 25 millimeters per second. So what this means is that all these little boxes, the big and little boxes, um, will add up to 10 total seconds from the start to the end of the EKG. So if we do some simple math, which I will skip writing it out for you, Every big box, which I'll trace out, so this is one big box made up of five little boxes. Every big box is 0 0.2 seconds. And every little box, so if we look here, this would be the big box. Then there's five little lines that make up each little box. Every little box is 0 0.04 seconds. And this will allow us to interpret the heart's electrical activity over the x-axis, which is time. Um, now, vertically, we talked about amplitude. What amplitude is, the simplest way to think about it, is that it's a measure of the power of the electrical signal that is reaching each of the leads on the chest. So, each big box amplitude vertically is going to be 5 millimeters, which means each small box, 5 divided by 5, equals 1. Um, this will be used to interpret different pathologies of the heart because it will change the amount of electrical activity um, meeting the leads on the chest. Uh, keep in mind that both the x-axis time and the y-axis amplitude actually can be changed when doing an EKG. Um, so just make sure that the standard measurements are being used before interpreting the EKG as it could throw off your interpretation if someone has changed the amplitude or the time that the EKG is recording over. All right, now for some definitions. Uh, when looking at EKG, we see a big group of squiggles. Uh, knowing some fundamental definitions will help us interpret these squiggles. So the first definition is going to be wave. So what is a wave? A wave is any negative or positive deflection from the baseline of the EKG. So this is the baseline. Horizontally, we interpret an EKG based on if there's a wave that is a positive deflection or a wave that's a negative deflection. The most common waves that we talk about on every EKG are this one here, this is the P wave. Then we have a Q wave that is very hard to see, an R wave, this positive deflection, an S wave, which is this little tiny negative deflection here, and a T wave, which is here. So this positive deflection is P, Q's down here, R is this big positive deflection, S is this little negative deflection here, and then T is this positive deflection. So these are all waves. Um, waves together create what's called a complex. So a complex is a combination of waves. The most obvious uh, complex that we talk about is actually the Q, R, S complex, which would be this complex of waves right here. I'll circle it on this complex so you can see what I'm circling. So this group of waves is known as a complex, and this specific complex would be the QRS complex. Okay, the next definition we'll talk about is an interval. So when we look at an EKG, we actually interpret um, the waves, complexes, and then the intervals. An interval is simply time between two different events or waves. Um, so when looking at uh, this complex and these waves, um, you can see the P wave here. It's harder to see on this EKG, but I'll draw out this would be the start of it all the way to the R wave. This would be known as the PR interval. These are important because they tell you how fast the um, 
different parts of the heart are depolarizing um, because it's picking up the electrical activity over time. Another interval we often talk about is the QT interval. So it would be from the Q wave out to the T wave. This would be the QT interval. And in future videos, we'll talk all about these intervals and what they're supposed to, the time they're supposed to take and what it means when they're, you know, short or long or even absent. The last definition I want to talk about is segment. This is a little harder to show on this EKG. We'll go over here. But a segment is similar to an interval. The difference is that a segment is actually a vertical representation on the y-axis. So it looks at changes in amplitude rather than changes in time. So the reason segments are important are that um, the ST segment um, and something called ST elevation is very critical for um, what can almost be a fatal heart attack or complete ischemia um, of the entire heart wall. So this is a normal ST segment, but if we looked, so we have our P wave, Q, R, S, you can't see the S, and then the T. So S, T. If there was a vertical change, so let's say the T wave went like this, you would see here that there's a vertical change. This would be ST elevation or an elevated ST segment. Okay. So that is going to be the introduction to EKGs. Um, I'll be posting many different videos on EKGs going over um, different pathologies, different meanings, and um, I look forward to giving some more 5-minute EKG videos in the future. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.